What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky P here, back with all the news after week four in year number three of our San Francisco 49ers franchise, with the 49ers getting a victory over the Detroit Lions to improve to 4-0 on the year. Next up is the 2-1 Philadelphia Eagles, but first, let's check out some highlights. Theo Riddick down the left side of the field, pushed out of bounds at the 33-yard line by Deron Villenbull, then on third down and 10. Getting a fresh set of downs would be a Theo Riddick once again making the play. And that would bring up a first and goal situation, which they would air to the end zone. But Demarcus Avery coming down with him. Matt McGloin challenging a double team there. And that did not go his way. Avery's third interception of the season. Then Dimitri Todman would get things going in the second quarter with the first points of the day. A 61-yard touchdown would put the 49ers on top 7-0. The 49ers would get the ball back on the left side. Corey Essex down the left side of the field. It had been a defensive battle until the big play by Dimitri Todman. Corey Essex following with one of his own. And then capping off the drive with a touchdown. The 49ers on top 14 to nothing in the second quarter over the Detroit Lions. The Lions trying to get back into it. It's Marvin Jones with a big receiving play of his own taken down at the 32-yard line. That would set up this Lions field goal as they finally get on the board midway through the second quarter. 14-3 would be the score of the 49ers, though. Not done yet. It's Dimitri Todman again down the right side of the field. Then on fourth down and nine, Joel Edison knocking a field goal through the uprights. 17-3 would be the lead. Theo Riddick trying to make some plays happen again. He would have another first down. Then right before halftime, the Lions kicking another field goal. 17-6 would be the score. At the end of the first half, Lions would get the ball in the second half. And here is Jones with the reception over the middle. But Hopkins wide right, unable to make it. That would set the 49ers up with great field position. Third down and nine over the middle. Shaquan Fryer into the end zone. The third touchdown pass of the day for Cody Kessler beating the blitz there. Then McGloin trying to get this team back into it. We'll find Ebron down the right side of the field on second down and eight. Theo Riddick will fumble the ball. Aaron Lynch picks it up and nobody will catch the 49ers linebacker. Aaron Lynch continues a monster start to the season. Finally an emergence from him that the 49ers had been expecting. 31 to 6 is the score. Golden Tate with the reception now. Then on second down and six play action. Over the middle, it's going to be Golden Tate again. Then on second down and eight, another play action pressure coming. And he fumbles the ball again. Marcel Cody recovering as DeForest Buckner getting the sack there. Marcel Cody forced the other fumble as well. On second down and 10, the 49ers trying to get back into it. But now Cody Kessler will fumble the ball and the Lions will take over with good field position at the 35-yard line. The second fumble of the day there for Kessler. On fourth down and goal, Earl Anthony beating Sean Kendall on the play. And that is the first touchdown of the day for the Detroit Lions. They would go for the onside kick. Corey Essex would recover, though. And the 49ers would start to try to run this clock out. They do end up punting the ball away, but Bradley Pinion getting it down on the two-yard line, down by Jimmy Ward there, and then a play-action mistake by Matt McGloin, met in the end zone by Sean Kendall. The 49ers would get the safety, and that is going to be it. 33-13 to is the score. Next up, the 49ers have the Philadelphia Eagles, a 2-1 team. Now, the Eagles started off really good last season, kind of flamed out, but They've started off good this season too. We're going to have to see if this is the Eagles team that they are or if maybe once again they're somewhat of pretenders. Can they keep this momentum going throughout the entire season? Either way, the 49ers do have to prepare. Corey Essex, a nice grab there over the middle. That is swatted down. Third attempt here. 49ers have to go for a silver now. And Kirkland Marion will be shy of the first down. So that is no good as well. Then on the fourth attempt, it's Willie Sneed with the catch. So the 49ers need a big play for the silver here. Pressure on the way. Kessler rolling out. Challenging for the end zone. And this is caught by Austin Safarian Jenkins. The 49ers do get the silver medal there. Pretty clutch play by Safarian Jenkins coming back. 
and a good read by Kessler to find him there. Defensively, we have to keep them from getting first downs, and Vladimir Mallard with the catch down to the one-yard line there. Second attempt over the middle, Willie Sneed delivering. So offense looking good once again. Defense kind of struggling here. Play action rolling out, Kessler going down. That is a sack by Jimmy Ward. The fourth attempt over the middle, wide open. Vladimir Mallard continuing to play well right now for the offense in practice. Then another play action rolling out. Not much there. Jimmy Ward getting the pressure on him again. So I believe the defense only going to get the bronze this time. Certainly not what they anticipated, but it'll have to do for now. They have to get ready for the Philadelphia Eagles, and we have to see if this team can turn it around. Now, again, I'm a bit ahead of schedule with these videos. I have not really seen any press questions. Next video, I should be able to work them in, so be sure to keep asking them. Uh, so I can have something to respond to. I've just been sick, so I've just been recording more uh, while I didn't have my voice. Now that I'm kind of getting my voice back, I'm trying to catch back up. But it's still a bit of a process, so I do apologize. Anyway, on to the scores. 23-20, to the Seahawks with a victory over the Bucks. Both teams now 2-2 two two on the season. The Seahawks started off the season 0-2, have won their last two, though, and this is a team on the rise. Both teams went 7-9 and nine last year, so it'll be interesting to see if one of these teams can take the next step. Obviously, the Seahawks more likely to do so, but the Bucks have a lot of good young players on the rise and definitely a team worth keeping an eye on. Wagner would lead the way in tackles with 11. Bennett McCoy and Rucci getting the sacks there. Uh, the defensive tackle, nice for the uh, Seahawks. Earl Thomas the third with the interception. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. Nothing going on. 35-27. to The Jags with a victory over the Redskins. The Jags now 4-0 and on the year. Blake Bortles continuing to kill it. The Redskins now at 2-2 two and -two on the season. Not a great game by Kirk Cousins there. Redskins have dropped their last two as well. They started off 2-0. and I gotta wonder if it's gonna be time for Denton Ritchie to get more involved or if they're just gonna keep going with Cousins for the time being. Allen Robinson would have a touchdown. Kadarius Folston kind of held in check, though. Will Compton, 12 tackles on the day. Spence and Jackson each getting a sack. Mack Hackett, a half a sack there. Interceptions, one by Mucamero, one by Breland. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. One by Pollard. He would be the only one to recover it. 42 to 10. The Chiefs with a big victory over the Bengals here. The Chiefs now 3 and 1 on the year. Their only loss being to the 49ers. The Bengals now 1 and 3. The Chiefs went 9 and 7 last year. The Bengals went 8 and 8 last year after winning the Super Bowl. Not off to a good start this season. This team is really starting to fall apart more and more each week as we progress throughout this. Defensively, D. Ford would lead the way in tackles. Sacks, four by Justin Houston on the day. Interceptions, nothing happening there. Fumbles forced. We are going to have zero fumbles as well. 42-14. to 14, The Colts get their first victory of the season in a blowout over the Tennessee Titans. The Colts now 1-3 and three on the year. And interesting enough, they had the help. Andrew Luck had a solid game, but obviously Christian Ponder making some plays as well. The Titans now 1-3 and three on the year as well. Still haven't been able to figure out what's going on with the Colts. They have not been getting victories. They have a lot of talent. Once again, the rookie tight end Huber, a pretty solid outing for him. Um, but it's just not translating the wins yet. Avery Williamson, 16 tackles. Anderson and Langford, each with four sacks on the day. That's eight sacks between two players there. Ayers would have one as well. Seeley Kirkendall for the Titans would have one. Jones and Vontae Davis getting the interceptions on the day. Fumbles forced. One by Kirkendall. It would not be recovered. 35-21. to The Bears with a victory over the Vikings. So, much like the Chiefs, the Bears now 3-1 and on the year. Their only loss being to the 49ers. Look at Antoine Street. The rookie is coming alive. 371 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. He is really growing into his own as a player. And the Bears are going to be scary because look at this. Alshon Jeffrey, nine catches, 208 yards, one touchdown. Kevin White, six for 133 touchdowns. Joey Wharton, a rookie for the Vikings, had two touchdowns. But plenty of players uh, for the Vikings to work with with Antoine Street. Definitely a bright future for this team, including last year's Rookie of the Year, Corey Orr, who would add another sack to his total here. Cornelius Kinney getting a half a sack as well. Interceptions, McCauley and Fuller making the plays. Fumbles forced. We are going to have 
Zero fumbles forced in this one. 42 to 35. The Dolphins with a victory over the Patriots. The Dolphins now at three and one on the year. Drew Brees, 303 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. James Vallejo, one touchdown, one interception. The Patriots now at two and two after going 11 and five last year. There's Dylan Burks, former teammate of um, Sean Kendall with the touchdown there. And then uh, Carew, a third-year pro, eight catches over 100 yards and a touchdown. Landry would add a touchdown going down the list. Uh, defensively, Patrick Chung would lead the way in tackles. Sacks are going to have a few players listed with one, including second-year pro uh, Eugene. Uh, Jason Westbrooks, the rookie out of UCLA with an interception, and that is a player I was highly scouting in the draft. And there he is making a play early on. Only one fumble recovered by Hardwick there. The Chargers with a 31-27 victory over the Raiders. The Chargers now 3-1 on the year. The Raiders now at 2-2. Two two. The Chargers went 7-9 last year after going 14-2 the year before. Definitely off to a better start this year. Looking to continue this same pace. Receiving the ball, Cooper, a monster game. Henry and Dawson each with a great game as well. Donquell Dawson selected in the first round out of Auburn. Over 100 yards and a touchdown for him. Defensively, Manti Teo and Khalil Mack leading the way in tackles. Khalil Mack, though, three sacks on the day for him. Urschel, the second-year defensive tackle, would have a sack as well. Interceptions, Ingram, Amerson, and Hayward making the plays for the defense. Fumbles forced, three fumbles forced. Only one would be recovered by Warlow. 30-27, to the Bills with a victory over the Jets. The Bills now 2-2 two two on the year. The Jets 0-4 oh on the season. Just no answer at quarterback for them right now. I mean, it looked like McCarron had a solid game. Keenum had a solid game, but... Ultimately, just not enough to get the victory there as they still have plenty of question marks. I do like those guys as potential players down the line, but just not happening right now for them. Um, as we go down, Whitehead going to have a touchdown there. Defensively, Sean Spencer. I know it's not Spencer, but I always think of Syke. Leading the way in tackles, Jenkins and Washington with Richardson getting the sacks. A few players going to split a sack. Interceptions won by Calvin Pryor. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. Uh, three fumbles forced, two of which would be recovered. 16-13, to 13, the Saints with their second victory in a row, this time over the Ravens. The Saints now at 2-2 two two with Kirkland Keaton leading the way. Uh, the Ravens now at 0-4 on the year. The Saints, of course, winning the Super Bowl last year, decided to let go of Drew Brees. They now have Kirkland Keaton. And uh, they started off 0-2, but since then, Keaton kind of leading this team to victories. Two straight wins. We will have to see if he can keep the momentum going with a win next week as well. But definitely on the right uh, path, I would say. Defensively, Rankins leading the way with 11 tackles and 2.5 and sacks. Willie Henry with 1.5 sacks. Uh, Forbes going to get involved there as well. Interceptions, Weddle and Vaccaro. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. Nothing happening there. 28-14, to the Broncos with a victory of the Browns. So the Broncos at 3-1 as well. The Browns now at 1-3. So out of three of the four 49er victories, they have taken down the Chiefs, the Bears, and the Broncos, all of which are 3-1 with their only loss being to the 49ers. 49ers beating some quality teams early on this season and definitely looking like a team on the rise. Virgil Green had two touchdowns in this one. Defensively, Dante Johnson, former 49er, leading the way in tackles. Derek Wolf with one and a half sacks. Ogba would get a sack as well. Hardy making a play there too. Interceptions two by Chris Harris Jr., one by Kirksey. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. One by wire. It would not be recovered. 37 to 31. The Rams with a victory over the Cardinals. The Rams improved to 2-2 two two on the year. The Cardinals falling to 2-2. Two two. Carson Palmer being out. Definitely hurting the Cardinals. Jared Goff, another solid game. He did throw for three interceptions, but one week after winning player of the week, he threw for four more touchdowns. Definitely a player on the rise there. And uh, again, the Cardinals now at 2-2 two and two dealing with those injuries. Kamar Aiken having a breakout season for the Rams right now. Absolutely killing it for them uh, as he had two more touchdowns. Once again, Phil Muhammad, not much going on there. Jefferson would lead the way in tackles. Two and a half sacks by Quinn, two by Haynes, or Hayes, one by uh, Donald. Interceptions, Lester Troop, Patrick Peterson, and Chandler Jones making the plays there. Fumbles forced. 
Uh, only one would be recovered by McDonald. 23-21, to the Falcons with a victory over the Cowboys. The Falcons now 2-2 two and two on the season. The Cowboys now 1-3. and three. However, the Cowboys started off really slow last year, really turned it on in the second half of the season, and ended up winning that division, if I am not mistaken. So definitely a team uh, capable of turning things around, but they obviously don't want to fall in too big of a hole. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, especially with the other teams in that division looking good early on right now. Zach Otto would have a touchdown for the Cowboys. Again, the replacement for Jason Witten there. Jalen Smith would lead the way in tackles. Irving and McCain, or McCain would have a sack apiece. Interceptions won by Jalen Smith. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. And won by Devin Taylor there. 37-31, to 31, the Texans would take down the Giants. The Texans now at 2-2 two and two on the season. The Giants get their first loss. They move to 3-1. And, and Pontbrained, uh, Pontbrained, did I say his name wrong before? I feel like I probably did. Getting his first loss. Not an outstanding game, but you know he's a rookie. Really not even supposed to be playing. Obviously, they drafted another guy, Bruce Allred, ahead of him. And that's really the player that we were looking at to kind of take this Giants team to another level. But with the injuries to him, you know, Pontbrain has been doing a really good job of leading this team to victories. It wasn't enough here today, but overall he has been an outstanding rookie. McKinney leading the way, 16 tackles, four and a half sacks by Jason Pierre-Paul in this one. The Giants defense really getting a ton of pressure on the Texans, but it ultimately just was not enough. Jamon Stovall in his second year, two interceptions on the day. This is a player we were heavily looking at drafting. He just didn't fall to us. Antoine Street, the rookie, 20 of 29, four passing touchdowns and an interception for him. Jason Pierre-Paul, eight tackles and four and a half sacks. Jamon Stovall, eight tackles, two interceptions, and then Phillip Rivers, 22 of 34, Four passing touchdowns and an interception for him. He did also have a fumble as well. But it's nice to see the rookie there. Another left tackle, Patrick Sauer out of Wisconsin. Pretty solid player. Projected to go mid-first round. Irving Hutton, look at this guy. Early first round projection out of Alabama. Looks like a monster of a player there. Then you have Gant Pennington out of Georgia. Uh, pretty solid red zone threat here. Selected to go mid-first round projected, I meant. Don D. Roan, another mid-first round projection. Uh, good hit power, decent tackle, decent pursuit. Malau Batiste out of Ole Miss, a possession receiver. Somebody else worth keeping an eye on. The 49ers, though, might be set at receiver with Corey Essex really starting to emerge. Here is another left tackle. Again, the 49ers have to keep looking at left tackles. An eventual replacement for Joe Staley if we do not already have that player on the roster. And then Gage Vernon, prototype, 21 years old out of Florida State. Definitely looking like a good player there. Zach Ritchie is the man in Philadelphia now. Second year pro out of Nebraska, 80 overall. Carson Wentz will be his backup with Jake Coker there. Then Jarek McKinnon at running back. And then first round selection, Nick Warfield. This is going to be a very good player. Only 87 speed, though. Might hold him back a little bit. Matthews, Doyle Green, Beckham, Aguilar, Hamilton, and Bell round out the crew here. Top wide, uh, top three receivers are okay. Uh, after that, it's a drop off. They do have Zach Ertz there. And a very young offensive line for this Eagles team. And really not that good of an offensive line. They do have Lane Johnson at right tackle. Mostly the left side of that line. Really not that great. They do have a lot of players on defense though. Fletcher Cox, Benny Logan, uh, Kennard is here as well. Middle linebacker Tolick with Hicks. I mean a ton of players that can make some plays here. Right outside linebacker Kendricks. Another very good player. However, their secondary leaves a lot to be desired. Tremaine Brock, the number one corner, traded to the Eagles from the 49ers. There is Antoine Marion down the list. McLeod going to be a free safety. And then Malcolm Jenkins at strong safety. So the safeties are solid, but the corners definitely need some work for this Eagles team. They've really yet to address it. We did think Marion was going to be an okay player, but really hasn't developed yet for the Eagles. The only injury being at left guard, not a huge loss for them, but certainly not welcomed one either. But that will be it for this episode, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in week five as the 49ers take on the 2-1 Philadelphia Eagles. Later.